Do you host a golf outing or just thinking about it? Does the day of operations, the day of the event, sometimes feel like chaos? Have you ever wondered how other events run so smoothly? Well, you've come to the right place. Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Mordino, and welcome to another GTAA webinar. We do a series of these and go in depth to help you produce a better golf tournament. For over 30 years, we've had the chance to work with over 200,000 tournament planners. And we have one simple mission, to help you produce the best golf tournament possible. Because we see from others what works and we see what doesn't work. So our job is to bring that information to you. So today we're gonna to talk about the day of operations. How do you run your event that day? You have spent six, seven months working up to this day. <clears throat> and now the big day is here. So we're going to cover uh, in-depth kind of things that's going to help you with your day of operations. Number one, what is your goal? What's the objective? What should it be? What should be the, the ultimate goal for that day? What are the key ingredients for that day? Uh, what goes into it? Uh, the agenda, uh, we're going to offer a sample schedule that you might be able to use. We're going to talk a little bit about games and contests, the format to keep pace of play, uh, signs and videos. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about an operations manual and, uh, and then a checklist. So we're going to try to cover everything that you need to know about your day of operations. You know, in the past, uh, it seems like a lot of events are unorganized and we've seen good ones. And we've seen some disasters. And mainly it's about the details, about being organized, about uh, being overwhelmed because you've got so many moving parts that day. So uh, we put together this little webinar to help you kind of work through all of that. And we hope that, um, you know, we, we don't continue to do the same thing year after year just because that's the way they did it last year. So you're going to make a much better impression if you have an organized event. So let's, let's try to change the past chaos and uh, get into the details. Now, this call will be recorded. So if, if you have to leave early or if you want to share this with other people, your committee member, feel free to do that. We'll send you the link after it's done. And, and also, if you can, write some uh, questions in the chat. I'll try to, to, to get to those uh, at the end. So let's get into it. What is the day of operations look like? What, what's, what should be the goal of that day? Well, I, I've got a couple of ideas just to offer you. Number one, I think our job is to create a first class event. You know, you've got to remember these golfers, they have lots of options. They can play in any event, any day throughout the year uh, in some cases, and uh, they can't play in all of them. So they're going to pick and choose the good ones, the first class ones. So I, I really want to encourage you to, to focus on first class um uh, what you know make it the best quality event that you can now what does that look like well i, I think it starts with a couple things one it starts with your golf course you, you got to have a high-end nice facility that they get excited to participate in um that has nice facilities <coughs> excuse me it has nice facilities nice banquet facilities and it, it really has good customer service First class also looks like organized, you know, things are running smoothly. People are not running around asking questions and wondering which way is up. So uh, make sure that we're going to get into that, those details in a second. Good food, good beverage, not another burnt hot dog and a drink ticket, but that shows first class, good food. Uh, great gifts and prizes shows quality, a great goodie bag with with not just uh, koozies and calendars and pins, but not Dutch donated stuff, but good stuff that the quality stuff that the golfers like. Um, and, and it doesn't really take much to upgrade your event. So think about when you're producing this event, how can we make this first class? Uh, the second thing that I think your goal should be that day is just to be organized. I mean, every single little detail from when the golfers arrive, the parking lot, is there VIP, is there, is there valet, is, is it organized, or is it just, uh, is, is there a place for the clubs to be dropped off? Is there folks out there grabbing the clubs from the, from the golfers as they arrive? Just that whole uh, beginning step, the first impression. Uh, how is registration? Is, is it uh, just unorganized and people all over the place and long lines. You know, I think it's important that we have the registration totally organized with, with several different lines and, and alphabetized so that there is no line. That's a smooth process 
uh, clear instructions, clear directions. I like to see lots of signage that says, you know, putting green this way and golf clinic this way and driving range this way and uh, food and drink this way. So directional signs shows that you're organized. Volunteers, lots of volunteers. I like to see volunteers with a with a maybe a unique different shirt, a different colored shirt, or even a button that says, I'm a volunteer, ask me, that are knowledgeable, that know the answers. And we're going to get into how we do that. Uh, but volunteers that, that help make the golfers feel comfortable. Uh, that's another way to be organized. Pace of play, big, big key factor in uh, being organized is pace of play. In other words, golfers do not like to play more than five hours. So I've been in tournaments where six hours and we go crazy. So anywhere from four to five hours is really great. And the golf course is a big part of that. We're going to talk about how do we keep uh, pace of play going. A tight schedule. Uh, the worst thing is, is golfers sitting around getting bored. So uh, we're going to look at the schedule and what that should look like, but a tight schedule. These are the things that really show being organized. The third thing I think uh, our goal should be is making it a memorable event. Uh, there's lots of events and most of them we forget about, but us golfers uh, love the ones that we can remember. So how do we make our events stand out? How do we make it unique? How do we make it different? Uh, I think we give them something that uh, they can remember us by. Uh, they be, become a winner at your event. They, we want them to walk away and say, wow, that was a great event because we want them to return year after year, year after year. So we're going to talk about maybe a, a memorable gift that will market you, market the event and, and helps them not forget about you. And then the fourth goal for that day should be raise more money. Uh, we're not just done if they've paid in advance and your sponsors are done. We can increase our revenue 25, 30% just that day if it's done right through mulligans, through super tickets, through the raffle, auction, the award ceremony, and the appeal which we'll talk about. So those I think are our main goals of the day. Number one, uh, obviously to be uh, first class, uh, be organized, make it memorable, and then to raise more money. So then the question would be, what are the key ingredients of the day? There's a lot of moving parts and you need to have a, a handle on the big picture as the event coordinator or event uh, tournament chairman. So. What are, those, what are those moving parts? Well, first of all, volunteers. Volunteers are key. The more volunteers we have uh, that are informed and educated, the better. So I'm gonna talk real quickly about what volunteers do you need? Um, first of all, you're gonna need a volunteer chairman, someone to oversee every volunteer to make sure that everyone knows what's going on, who's in doing what, and, and they're in the right location and so forth. We need a, a volunteer to oversee sponsors. sponsors Sponsors are your big revenue, so we want to make sure that they're taken care of, they feel important, so someone to meet and greet, make sure that uh, they feel uh, cared for at the event. We need someone in charge of that goodie bag, someone to make sure that all the gifts and prizes have arrived, that the, they're all put into the bags, that they're being distributed at registration. And then registration, someone to oversee registration. Now, you're going to need several people in each of these areas, but you need one person, you know, to oversee that process. So registration is key. I like to put a person in charge of golfers. Now, even though the golf course is, uh, is uh, mainly in charge of that, you want to be the you know, making them feel comfortable, a meter and greeter, um, making sure that their cart uh, are organized and the names are on the carts and they know where to go and what hole they're supposed to start on. You need one person overseeing that auction. That auction is going to be big. And if it's done right, you can make lots of money. Uh, the raffle could be uh, huge if you get 50, 60 items. How do you coordinate that? Someone to oversee that process. And then uh, maybe a putting contest if you have one before the event and, and the finals maybe afterwards and possibly a golf clinic, which uh, is always a fun thing to have. So those are the volunteers you need. So that's a key ingredient of your event. Another key ingredient is 
well, what we like to call the pregame. What happens before the golf tournament? What's going on? Uh, what are some ingredients there? Well, it could be uh, any putting contest that you, you have uh, at the putting green, kind of the qualifier. You may have some long drive contest on the driving range in advance. Those are always fun. I like to see golf clinics, a uh, little golf instruction on the driving range by a well-known golf pro. If you can get one, uh, that's added value that, that uh, shows them that you're giving back. You're giving them more, giving them some, some golf instruction. Uh, registration, huge. Obviously, um, that's a big, big part of it. And I think a big breakdown for a lot of tournaments in show and own organization is that registration. So you need lots of volunteers, maybe five or six, depending on the size of your tournament. And as I mentioned earlier, a line, uh, several lines, maybe in alphabetical order, so they're not all standing in one line. Uh, make sure that you try to get most payments in advance, whether it's definitely golfer registration. No one shows up without paying in advance because they may not show up. But I like to sell super mulligans. Uh, I like to sell raffle tickets. Uh, I like to promote the auction. Everything in advance online, uh, which means a lot of communication with those golfers. So those are just some of the things that are what we call pregame. And then during the tournament, you've got, um, obviously, the golf tournament itself, the format. What does that look like? Um, uh, is it explained properly? Uh, do you have a rule sheet? Um, I like to send out a rule sheet in advance uh, so the golfers can read that before. I like to see it on the cart uh, printed. And then I like to see a uh, actual uh, either someone from the golf course or your your uh, tournament chairman reading the instructions. So no, there's no question about what the format is and how it works. Um, and, and, and so they don't have any question about where's the long drive, where's the uh, Where's the close to the pin? What contests are going on? How do I win? That's what they want to know. How can I win? And the more they feel comfortable with the format and where the game's in contest and what they're playing for, uh, the better they feel. I can tell you that a lot of us golfers will go to a tournament and, and really don't have any clue on what's going on. Our buddy invites us, we show up, and uh, it seems very unorganized and no one knows what's going on. So make sure you make it really, really clear. What I love to do is before the tournament starts, right when they're getting in their cart, I like to pull all the golfers out of their golf carts and I like to put them all together, maybe on the putting green or the driving range, take some big group photos and then read the instruction uh, over the sound system right then and there. Now, you may have a huge tournament with 200 players and that's tough, but it's, it's worth it. Uh, yes, it's a little bit of organization trying to get them back in their carts, but it's well worth it because now you get those group photos which are invaluable for promotion in the future, but it's also a way to give out the instructions in advance uh, and let them know what the day looks like, where the contests are, and they feel much more comfortable with that. Another big part of uh, that golf could be the weather. Uh, I would really caution you to be uh, aware of what the weather is going to look like that day. Make sure you're checking it every day. I don't know if you know this, but you can buy weather insurance. Weather insurance can protect you. But people say, what do we do when it's bad weather? Well, you know, uh, there's a couple of options. Um, most likely it will not be canceled unless it's just pouring rain. If it pours the day before or the morning of, uh, it won't be canceled. This is a light drizzle or you know, a little bit of raindrops, uh, the golf course will not cancel that. The golf course is the only one that has the right to cancel that. In a lot of cases, if they do cancel, they'll give you vouchers for the golfers to come back, which can be a nightmare, I can assure you, to try to reorganize that tournament. But it shows goodwill and that you did your best. But typically what will happen, let's say you're, you're starting to play the tournament, the golfers play maybe nine holes and it starts to poor rain. Uh, I would be prepared for that. I would have some activities inside ready for them. Typically, if the golfers have played nine holes, they're, they're content, they're happy. Um, you know, sure, they want to play 18, but if the weather doesn't permit, uh, there's other ways to keep them entertained. I like putting contests indoors, maybe a simulator, but be prepared for bad weather. Um, and uh, you, you'll avoid that, that big challenge. So you've got the golf, that's the key ingredient. And then you've got the games and contests. Um, uh, you know, we have the long drives and we, we have the close to the pin. I would encourage you to take a close look at the money-making games and contests because there's so many of them out there. Uh, a lot of times we'll do close to the pin and long drive for, you know, for prizes, which is great, but I like to see money-making contests. Now we can, we've spent a whole hour talking about that, how you make money with games and contests. 
contest. So we won't go into it today, but make sure that you have a good handle on, on which games in contest. Uh, contest meaning, you know, first, second, third, whether that's team, uh, individual, different flights. I like to give more than first, second, third. I like to give fourth, fifth, sixth, again, to make more 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 winners. Many people ask how many games and contests should there be? And the answer is simple. It's it's it depends on your purpose. I've been to events where it's put on by the convention center or a hospitality group and there's there's parties on every hole. There's food and there's drinks and there's games and and people don't really care because it's just fun. But if it's a more serious competition, then you want to be very careful not to hold up the golfers in these games and contests. So that's very 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 important. I want to get back to how too many games in contests because what big topic comes up is pace of play. Uh, you know, how do you keep it on track with these five hours of golf? And there's several ways. Um, it's not just about the format, although the format's important because remember, if you've got a group of beginner golfers or golfers that don't golf, golf very often, uh, they're not going to be as good and or as fast. So you want to have a scramble format so that uh, and they're not spending a lot of time chasing balls, you know, scramble simply a team event where they use the best ball hit. So that's one way. Choose the right format uh, to keep the pace of play. Better golfers, you can use a best ball because they know how to keep up that pace of play. Another way to keep the pace of play is spotters. I love uh, spotters. Maybe if you've got lots of trees or desert, you may want some volunteers out there watching where the balls go and, and helping the golfers track those down so they don't spend too much time tracking down balls. You have a two putt minimum, uh, maximum. You say that uh, two putts on the green and that's it. It's another way to keep the pace of play. But my favorite is a four caddy. Uh, caddies are great. Uh, can be expensive uh, depending on the facility, but four caddies are great. Usually one person per foursome that will help read the uh, uh, the distance to the pin. It also help read the greens. We all tip the four caddy, but it's a fast way to keep pace of play, and it makes us golfers feel important that we have a caddy helping us with the tournament. So think about four caddies. But those are just a few ways, you know, to uh, to keep the pace of play going because you do not want to go after over five hours of golf. Another big key ingredient for your event is food and beverage. Uh, very, very important, you know, as golfers love food, but there's a strategy in the right kind of food and when to serve it, how to serve it. You can, you can actually give too much food. Uh, we don't like to be stuffed. We don't like to, and we don't hate, want to turn down food. So the more you give us, the more we're going to eat. So we want to be careful with that. We don't want to give out too much alcohol because again, we don't want a bunch of really drunk people at the award ceremony, but uh, I love some fun things to do on the course, maybe some food stations. Uh, I, remember we should get all these sponsored so you're making money doing this but I remember a tournament where they had a chef making uh, little um, uh, snacks on the on, on the grill out there on the tea box I remember another tournament where there was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and I'll never forget that tournament because I love peanut butter and jelly and there's something about peanut butter and jelly and golf that go great together so it's just little things that uh, that get attention where we remember and uh, get them sponsored so you make some money so that's the uh, it's very very important you don't want to stuff them before the award ceremony or they'll they won't even stay they'll just eat the feed on the food on the course and then take off but make sure there's a nice balance we love great food at the award ceremony but not if we're overstuffed throughout the day and then the other key ingredient the day of the operations is the award ceremony you know a lot of us i did we did a a session last week on on the award ceremony what that should look like and i encourage you to turn it into a party make it fun golfers will stay if you make it fun turn it into a party have a great mc uh, bring out some entertainment whether that's music or a band or a dance floor or magicians but make it fun keep it upbeat see if you do all this you can you can actually make more money by inviting other people and selling tickets you got other people there now you have more folks to sell raffle tickets to more people that are involved in the auction so uh, it's very very important to have a fun upbeat award ceremony that golfers stick around for uh, you don't want them leaving and if you have great entertainment you keep it upbeat you turn it into a party 
they'll stick around. Plus you want to make lots of winners. Winners are key. Winners stick around. If they think they're going to win something, then they're going to stick around. So those are kind of the key ingredients. Now, what is the day? What should that look like? What should the agenda look like and the schedule? And this is just an example and you don't have to stick to this one, but I like this schedule and I recommend it to everyone that I work with. But uh, first of all, I like afternoon events. Why do we like afternoon events? Why? Because number one, if you have too early in the morning, people show up late. Uh, it's really crazy to get people organized when it's seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, but two, if you have in the afternoon, people aren't rushing back to the office. If you have in the morning, they're going to they're going to be in a hurry. They're going to work. They're going to play golf and they're going to run back to the office. But if you have it in the afternoon, they're going to stick around. They're it's too late to go back to the office and they're ready to party. So so I encourage you to think about um, an afternoon event. Plus, I like to see a full day of activities. Get them there semi early and entertain them you know, have fun, uh, do some fun things with them. Uh, so here's kind of the schedule that I recommend. Number one, get the committee there early. You could get them early, it's eight o'clock in the morning and meet with the staff of the golf course, meet with the volunteers, go over every single detail. Very, very important. Uh, I'm gonna show you an operations manual and what that should look like. And I encourage you to print one out so that everyone has everything they need to know about that day. Maybe golf registrations can start around 10 o'clock. Maybe you've got some brunch, you got some light breakfast uh, there for them to to uh, take advantage of they ran out of the house early and didn't get to eat. I like to see a putting contest. It's just fun. It's a way for golfers to gather around. I love to see it sponsored to make some money, but it's the pre-qualifier. The, the, the finals of the putting contest usually are after the event, but I love to see a putting contest in the morning. As I mentioned earlier, a golf clinic is always great. It's added value. Get a golf pro to give some golf instruction, maybe tweak their game. You know, it doesn't have to be more than 20, 30 minutes, uh, but golfers who don't golf very often will appreciate those tips and appreciate that advice to help them with their day. Maybe have an open bar in the morning. Um, again, not to feed them, to give them too much drinks, but uh, they love an open bar. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, get them all together for a group photo and some instruction for the day before they get in their carts. But you want to get them all in their carts, you know, a good 20 minutes early so that if you do a shotgun start, then they can all head out to the golf course. And then maybe the shotguns can start around noon. Uh, this is a good time because this doesn't start too late, depending on the golf course and their schedule. Hopefully they don't have a tournament there in the morning, but then you start around noon. They finish around five. Ideally, uh, you have some open hors d'oeuvres. Now, this is a very crucial time is is after the tournament, because if, if, if you don't do it right, uh, golfers, some golfers are going to finish maybe an hour in advance of the other golfers. So it's important that you have pace of play. You've got Rangers out on the course, keeping them moving. You've got the scoring, ideally, uh, you know, live scoring so that so don't spend an hour trying to get all the scoring together. But this is a crucial time because you want to get that award ceremony going right away. People are waiting around an hour or two. They're going to leave. So you want to make sure that uh, you keep the pace of play, you keep a tight schedule, you get them in uh, and start that award ceremony. And then award ceremony, the dinner starts, uh, they uh, obviously you want to give out, uh, you know, you want to have a great MC, keeping it lively, keeping it a tight schedule. You want to recognize those sponsors, maybe even give them a couple minutes to say something. You want to share about your organization, what you're doing, and then ask for some more money because you have a good cause. You want to give out the awards. I like to leave the live auction and the raffle to the very end. If there's a grand prize, I mean, worthwhile staying for, because again, this will keep the golfers sticking around. So that's kind of the day of the schedule. Um, uh, you don't have to keep to it by every minute, but it seems to work well. It's a good generic one to start with. Um, so let's talk about, uh, oh, I didn't even let you look at that schedule. Give you a few minutes to take a picture of that. Although I'm going to send you the notes. So don't worry, I'll send you the PowerPoint and the notes if you want them. So you can take a look at that schedule. Um, the uh, signs and videos, a uh, very, very important part of the event. Uh, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of purpose behind signs and video. They're not just thrown out there just because you sold a sponsor. Uh, so keep in mind, there's a mission behind signs and videos, mainly marketing. 
uh, think about your sponsors. Your sponsors want to feel like they're getting exposure. They want to feel like they're getting uh, their money's worth, the value. So you want to make your event look bigger than it really is through signage. And you do that with bigger signs, not just a couple of little small hole signs. It seems like charities do the same thing. They put a, a little, a, you know, one by two sign on a piece of wire and it flops and usually end on the ground by the end of the day. So I want to encourage you to think about bigger signs for your sponsors. I like three by fives. They're not that much more expensive and it's worthwhile because the sponsor not only feels like they're, you know, getting their value, but also uh, other companies will say, hey man, this is a great event. This is big. So you want your event to look big. And that just simply means bigger signage. You may want to think about a big billboard and, you know, as they're driving into the, uh, to the golf course it says hey the tournament's here not just a little sign but a big billboard i like to see a, a big banner a registration with all the sponsors logos on it looks uh, sometimes really big and then maybe a backdrop for photos that's always cool because people are going to be taking photos let them take as many photos as possible because the more the, the more they post the more social media uh, the more exposure you get with your logo and the sponsor's logo on that backdrop uh, as I mentioned, whole signs should be a good three by five if you can do that. I, I like to see tee box markers, you know, and if you watch television, you watch the PGA Tour, you see all the tee boxes have a unique tee box marker. And usually that's because they have a title sponsor. So think about that. It makes it really look cool. I like pin flags, unique pin flags. They're not that expensive and you can always sell them, get them autographed uh, at the end to pay for themselves or even sponsored. That group photos are key, as I mentioned, because again, group photos offer social media opportunities, a lot of marketing opportunities. Those are the photos that we're going to keep and, and put in our album. So make sure you get some of those. I like to see action shots throughout the day. If you really want our ambitious, um, I love to see an action shot uh, video or slideshow at the award ceremony. That's always fun. You share that with your golfers and then they share it social media and again, more exposure for you. So the purpose of signs and media are, are, are making your event look bigger, uh, more exposure to your sponsors, uh, hopefully other companies may want to think about sponsoring your event next year because of all this great signage and then future marketing promotion. People love to see themselves and they're going to promote it. And the more you, photos you can offer them, the more they can do that. So I mentioned earlier about getting your committees together, getting your volunteers together early. I like to see what I call an operations manual. An operations manual is something that has everything needed for that golf tournament. Everything needed um, that anybody wants to know. Here, here's why this is so important. Typically, when you have a lot of volunteers, if the volunteers are not informed and do not know what's going on, a golfer will ask that volunteer and they don't know and it makes you look unorganized. So I encourage you to print out an operations manual. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you what our an operations manual looks like here really quick and see if this can uh, help you with your event. Give me a second while I show you the operations manual. Okay, it has everything. It has a table of context. It has, uh, it has everything you want to know about that day, the schedule, the format, if you have celebrities, sponsors, signs, financial, food and beverage, auction items, raffle items, vendors, and contacts, layout, day of needs. So you go through this, it has all the basic information, uh, you know, the pricing, it has the team who's involved, who's in charge of each area, talks about the schedule of the day and what does that look like. It talks about um, the format, you know, what is the format? How does that work? What, are the, what, what contest do you have? What, who can be a winner? Talks about um, close to the pin and where they are, what holes they're at, where the long drive is, has a list of all the sponsors and what they get and where their whole sign should be, has a list of all the sponsor signs, maybe the financials, what are your income, what are your expenses, food and beverage, when is that being served and what are they going to get, uh, it's going to also have 
have um, the volunteers listed and who's in charge of what area, what uh, auction items are going to be given away. Very important because golfers are asked those questions. What raffle items are you giving out? So they want to know that. Who are your vendor contacts so that you can have direct uh, contact with them? The layout of the facility, where things are located, and then the day of needs. Very important, the day of needs with a checklist. What do you need to bring to the event? So this is just kind of an overview of what I believe an operations manager should look like. Yours will look different, but uh, it's very important that we obviously have one uh, for several reasons. You want everyone on the team informed about every question that can remotely be asked. Uh, and they feel better about what's going on, where things are at and, and, and what's going on. And obviously in that uh, operations menu, you've got the checklist with what, need, what, what, what do you need for operations? What do you need for parking? Do you need signage? Do you need valet people? What do you need in the putting contest? Do you need signage? How about the golf clinic? Do you need more signage? Do you, do you need some balls, extra clubs? What do you need at registration? Do you need uh, money collectors? Do you need uh, a merchant processing service? Registration, uh, volunteers, signage, a list of all the signs, a list of all the game, gifts and prizes. So you don't forget about any of those. What goes in the goodie bag? A list of those. Who's the photographer? What shots do you need? Award ceremony, auction items, raffle. So obviously all the things that uh, talked about. And then very important is this layout. I encourage you to have a layout of the facility. A lot of people forget to have this layout because uh, it, it can be tough to, to do, but I think it's very important. Volunteers need to know where they're going to be. Uh, staff needs to know what's going on. Where's the party? Where's the putting contest? So I encourage you to print out a, a layout of the facility so that you can uh, um, make sure that everyone knows where everything is going on. And then the final topic that we want to talk about is how to get these golfers coming back. Uh, again, we talked about your goals for the day, but here's just a few ideas on how to get these golfers coming back every year, because that's really the ultimate goal. Show them a first class event and get them back next year. It's so much nicer to have a sold out event for next year than having to start all over again every year. So I encourage you at that award ceremony, sign, award ceremony, sign them up for next year. Do a little promotion saying, did you have a great time? And if you sign up today, it's only $10 deposit and we'll uh, give you a sleeve of golf balls. Great way to get your field sold out. Because you see, remember, you are fresh on their memories. They're thinking about you right now. So get them signed up now for next year. Give them something to remember you by. I know this is kind of silly, but use a marketing tool Cool. That goodie bag is great. Um, I want to show you a couple of items that I use or I that I remember events by. I know they're silly, but I get this coffee mug every year at this one tournament. And for whatever reason, I use this coffee mug and it reminds me of this tournament. So I'm thinking about this tournament and this group every single day. And so you want to give them something that they're going to use that they're going to remember you by. Another thing that I like to uh, remember terms by is this little I know it's simple but this little a uh, picture of my little group uh, and I put this up on my desk every day and guess what I'm thinking about that tournament almost every day how would you like your golfers and your sponsors to think about you your organization on your, your event every day give them something they can remember you by that they're going to use not something like maybe a pen but you know pins get lost but something that they can use. Um, get everybody's email, uh, whether it's at registration, whether it's when they're signing up for the tournament, or whether it's at the award ceremony. But make sure you get everyone's email so that you can stay in touch with people throughout the year and they don't forget about you. Remember, out of sight, out of mind. And if they forget about you and your tournament, they're not going to put it in their, their calendars and they're going to forget about you. Uh, people ask me, how do we communicate to our sponsors and to our golfers? I love to see a newsletter that you create that goes to your database every month. It doesn't have to be in depth, doesn't have to be fancy. Maybe it's just a golf tournament update and it has topics like, you know, how much money did you raise this year? Where did the money go? Who did you help? Talk about scholarship funds or 
people go do profiles on people you actually helped. Talk about the golf course in detail when you secure it for next year. Talk about sponsors and what they do. And it's a good way to promote sponsors. But most importantly, stay in front of your golfers and your sponsors every single month throughout the year to make sure they don't forget about you and they come back next year. So I'm going to wrap up here in a second. But before I do, uh, for some of you who do not know, just going to real briefly tell you about who we are and what we do. We're here to serve you. Our membership is free. We offer weekly newsletters with tournament tips, new ideas. We offer now these weekly webinars that go in depth about er every area. And we'd love to hear from you. If you've got a, an area that you want us to go in depth about, we do the research, we do the homework, and then we present it to you. So feel free to let us know about those. We have books. We have books available. Uh, How to Produce a Successful Golf Tournament, which is over 80 pages every step of the way. We have it in a hard copy and an e-version. We have a new book called 400 Games and Contests in Format Ideas. It shows you all kinds of ways to, to make money with games and contests. We also have a certification program. If you said, hey, I want to be a tournament certified planner, or even if I want to get into the business, we can help you do that. So keep that in mind. And then if you just need some coaching and some consulting for some bigger events, or if you want to take your event to the next level, we can help you do that. So keep that in mind. We're here to serve you. Let us know if we can help you do that. So let me wrap up by just saying a couple things. Number one, uh, congratulations. If you're doing a tournament, you've done it already. Uh, you've broken the ice and you're on your way. So let's do some tweaking and make your event the best event possible because we want the perfect day. We want people coming back. So be organized, have an operations manual, have a checklist, be totally organized. Focus on having a first class event, one that people say, wow, this is great. I loved it. I can't wait to come back next year. I can't wait to tell my friends about that. Keep, your fr keep them entertained, uh, have a tight schedule, give them a gift that they're gonna remember you by. And if you do these things, I promise you, not only will you make more money, that day, you won't feel like it's chaos, but most importantly, you'll produce a first class event that people will remember and they're going to come back year after year. So I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Again, this call will be recorded and we will share with you with the link and the notes for today and uh, let us know if we can help you in any way. So thanks for joining us. Good luck. Have a great weekend.